How's it going, everyone? This is the Anime Man. Tear list! Are they, are they, are they still a thing? Because I'm gonna continue to beat this dead horse until it is truly dead and rotting in the ground. Now look, I've done a lot of tier lists on this channel. I've done the Anime Waifu tier list. I've done the Henti Culture tier list. Twice I've done that. I've done the Isekai tier list with my good friend Gant, and I've done the Romance Anime tier list with my good friends Emily and Ditus. But if there's one thing that all of those tier lists have in common is that someone has already made them before. Yes, that's right. I have run out of originality with my tier lists. So I had to think to myself, I need to make the one tier list that nobody will be stupid enough to make because it is going to rot the brain of the person who will even attempt to try and make it. And since nobody on YouTube was up to that challenge, it was my time to shine, baby. Now, if there's one thing that a lot of us anime fans are just absolutely terrified of in every aspect, even just hearing the words will send a shiver down your spine, is when you hear the words live action anime. Maybe it's because of the stigma around it, or maybe it's just the concept of it, or maybe it's the prior examples that some of us were unfortunate enough to see. But the general consensus among anime fans is that live action anime adaptations, regardless of if it's made in Japan, if it's made in Hollywood, or if it's made anywhere else in the world, is that uh, primarily they are not very good. And I feel that's because a lot of people are just focusing on the bad adaptations. Now, there might be a million different titles that you had just thought of when I said bad anime adaptation. But I for one decided to really do a deep dive to see is every live action anime adaptation actually bad? So today we are here on tearmaker.com once again to make the anime man's ultimate live action anime tier list. And as you can see from this list down here, I have compiled 20 live action anime. Yes, that's right. I have been unfortunate enough to have to sit through 20 whole live action anime adaptations. Some of these I hadn't seen previously, some of them I had to re-watch again because they've been so long since I first saw them. And I'm just gonna do my honest to god review to see if there are actually any good live action anime adaptations out there. Hey, do you use the internet? <laughs> of course you do. And you don't want people looking at the weird sites you're visiting every day, right? Well, searching the web without a VPN is kind of like driving a car without your driver's license. Only fools partake in that. Your internet service provider can see all the sites you visit even when you're in incognito mode. And in some countries, they're legally allowed to sell that info to advertisers. That's messed up. But luckily, I've got a great solution for all of you. It's called ExpressVPN. Not only does ExpressVPN reroute and encrypt 100% of your network data to help protect your online privacy, but it can also help you change your online location to get around geo restrictions. So now I can access Crunchyroll from Japan and thousands of new shows on Netflix like Crazy Rich Asians that aren't normally available in my country. Not only is it super fast and super easy to use, but I have it on all my devices, phones, laptops, even routers. Plus, ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by TechRadar and countless others. So if you want full control of your internet experience, then make sure to use my link, expressvpn.com slash anime man to get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Back to the show. Now, mind you, I have not seen every single live action anime adaptation thankfully. So I decided to pick 20 that I think is a, a good mixture of the different variations of live action anime there might be. Also, I realized there's a lot of live action anime TV series. I have not included any of those. These are all just feature length films. So keep that in mind. All right. So to start off with, let's start with this one right here, Urasao Naoki's 20th Century Boys. Now, there are actually, I believe, three or four of these movies to have come out. Uh, I only ended up seeing the first one. And I absolutely adore Urasao Naoki. I think Urasao Naoki is just a hidden genius. He makes some of the most compelling character-driven drama stories, I think, out of any mangaka out there. Obviously, I can't give enough praises to the original 20th Century Boys manga because it's just absolutely brilliant. Please go and read it if you haven't. But even you anime-only watchers out there will probably know some of his other works, like Monster, for example, an absolutely incredible drama thriller show with probably one of the greatest and most humanized villains in all of anime. And my god, the soundtrack is beautiful. Everything about that is absolutely gorgeous. Now, 20th Century Boys, like a lot of Urasao Naoki's works, is very human-driven and is very much rooted in reality in a lot of ways. So that's already one good step for making into a live-action adaptation. I feel the best ones are the works that don't rely too heavily on the CG because God forbid Japan cannot do CG to save their goddamn life. And the casting for this was pretty good. Some of the, the technical effects on it were kind of meh, and I don't know what it is about Japanese acting 
that is just so not good. Like, I get that that's probably, like, the norm for Japanese cinema, but if, especially when you compare it to, like, Hollywood acting or just Western acting in general, I don't know what it is. Something about it seems really campy and over-exaggerated. Like, I feel Western actors are able to do subtle emotions really well, like, very in very realistic portrayals, whereas Japanese actors, when they're asked to portray a certain emotion, they, for some reason, portray that emotion while also on cocaine. And so yeah, I feel every Japanese live action adaptation in this tier maker video is probably going to get points deducted just for that. But 20th Century Boys, the live action at least, I feel was pretty decent. The storytelling was pretty good. They didn't change around the story all that much. Some of the scenes were genuinely unnerving and thrilling. And overall, I feel it's in no small part thanks to Urasawa Naoki's incredible writing that this movie was actually pretty decent. So I'm going to throw it up in the B tier. A strong start, but let's head on over to the Hollywood side of things with Alita Battle Angel. Yes, this is actually based off a manga series of the same name, I believe written around the 90s. For some reason, someone in Hollywood was like, Finna turn that into a live action, even though no one has read the original manga. Joke's on you, I've read the original manga because I'm the fucking anime man, goddammit. And listen, for starters, why, why, what did, what the fuck did they do to Alita in this live action? What, what did they do to her? Why are her eyes so massive? Like, this is rule number one for live action anime adaptations. Don't make the characters look like they're using the anime filter on Instagram. Like, that's rule number one, and they just straight up broke that rule. And for some reason, they only use this filter on Alita, but no other character. Like, the professor looks fine, all the villains look pretty human. For some reason, Alita is the only one. Maybe it's because she's, like, the only robot, or, I guess, cyborg, android, however you want to call it in this movie, but... My god, I, I just couldn't get over the, the massiveness of her eyes and just her whole facial features in general. It looked like I was staring into a, a, a human that had been morphed from an insect. And yeah, because they don't actually go through the entirety of the Alita Battle Angel story, especially when you're following it with the manga, the, the, the movie just kind of ends really abruptly and just really just gives you the biggest blue balls of your life. But I will give points to the movie for Christoph Waltz's performance because he is an incredible actor. I love everything that he is in and I think he genuinely made this movie just that much more bearable to sit through. But again, if I had the choice, I, I would just go and read the manga, honestly. It's, it's actually a really good manga, especially if you do like your sci-fi. This movie was just kind of a, a, a sore attempt at it. I'll give it, fuck, I don't know, maybe like a D tier, I guess. It's it's not horrible. Like, there's a lot of good things about it. Like, the, the action choreography was pretty good. And the acting was pretty good, but again, everything else they kind of just, you know, it's almost like they're making fun of the original source material in a way, which uh, kind of rubbed me off the wrong way. Alright, up next we have uh, <laughs> Attack on Titan. <laughs> oh god, this one's a doozy. Again, there are two movies, I think, or three live action movies, I forgot how many. There's more than one, basically, and I've seen all of them. I actually got the chance to go and watch this first movie as a premiere when I was still living in Australia. I got sent by the folks over at uh, Madhouse Studios. Thank you, by the way, for that. That was really cool of you guys to do. To go and see the first live action anime with a good friend of mine. And uh, yeah, what a fucking mess this movie is. For starters, uh, just let's just throw the story completely out the window, even though Isayama Hajime made an absolutely brilliant story with amazing amounts of politics, amazing amounts of action, amazing amounts of character-driven revenge and anger that just radiates from the pages of the original manga to this like almost like sob story spin-off that is not even a spin-off. It's, it's not even like a spiritual successor because they just added a bunch of shit in this movie that is not present in the original. Like for starters, uh, Levi, who is arguably one of the most popular characters in the Attack on Titan fan base is just like not there. Now I'm pretty sure I made a whole video about it back in the day when this movie came out as to the stupid reason as to why they didn't include Levi in this movie. Uh, TLDR, they didn't include Levi in the live action Attack on Titan movie because the director thought that it would be too difficult for the Japanese actors to pronounce his name. 
What? Let's just forget about the fact that, first of all, Attack on Titan is written by a Japanese guy. Second of all, uh, none of the fucking voice actors in the anime had a difficult time of saying Divai. And if they're using the argument of, of, Oh, Levi is a German name and the, the German names don't fit all too well. Then can you please explain the fact that you left Eren Jaeger, which possibly could be one of the most German names from an anime character of all time. And, uh, I just couldn't also get over the fact when the fucking, uh, Titan baby rocked up, like, that makes any fucking sense. Like, there's literally a scene, I remember, where Hanji explains the fact that the Titans don't reproduce because they don't have any reproductive organs. That's the mystery as to where they come from. Meanwhile, a fucking Titan baby shows up fresh out of whatever crib it crawled out of. And yeah, just compared to the manga and anime, the, the, the acting was lame, the action was also lame, the CGI was god-awful. I just felt no tension in this movie at all, which, you know, once you take tension out of Attack on Titan, you're just left with a pile of crap. So yeah, I deadass am going to give this an F tier just because this is, I feel, one of the fantastic examples of how not to do a live action adaptation. Even though the scenery looked cool, the costumes looked really dope, and, and the casting was somewhat decent. They, they didn't like over anime fight. They basically didn't put their actors in cosplay like other live action movies we'll be talking about in this video. But just man, talk about a failed attempt at turning a fantastic manga and anime series, a modern classic if you will, into just one of the most drab, boring, run-of-the-mill thriller horror shows imaginable. Alright, but up next we have Blade of the Immortal. Now, immediately, gonna throw this up in an S tier. If Attack on Titan was how not to do a live action adaptation, Blade of the Immortal is how to do a live action adaptation. This is a brilliant live action adaptation, which unfortunately, because of how little the original source material is known just in the modern anime community, just completely got overshadowed, I feel. Like, yes, I have met people who have consumed the original Blade of the Immortal, and if you are one of those people, hey, fist bump to you, my boy. But man, this live action adaptation is just so goddamn good. It's not over-exaggerating, the acting is fantastic, the choreography is fantastic, and again, it's because it's built off of just a really solid original source material like it, it's just absolutely brilliant and again you have japanese actors in a japanese feudal setting and really all, already that combination together you can ask anybody that combination together is already hard to fuck up so if you're going to take anything out of this video take the fact that blade of the immortal live action is a really good live action all right up next we have bleach oh okay so this is one that i actually just watched about a week ago as of me recording this video and is really the inspiration as to me making this tier maker video in the first place because I remember when they first announced the fact that they were making a bleach live action my hand went through my forehead so goddamn fast because there's no way they can adapt this into a live action when they could barely adapt it into an anime I mean fuck the anime got cancelled because of how shit the Aizen arc was but luckily this movie doesn't go into the Aizen arc in fact it doesn't even go into the soul society arc it basically ends when Dukia gets captured by Bjarne Yakuya and Denji to go back to the Soul Society because of the fact that she lost her Zanpakuto to Ichigo. If you know nothing about Bleach, then that probably just sounded like a bunch of jargon, but basically it covers like the first arc, the first very, very short arc of when Ichigo, our main character, discovers that he has these abilities to fight these demons. Now listen, just right off the bat, I'm going to give Bleach like a solid B tier. And hear me out. For one thing, yes, a lot of the characters, if not most of the characters, are in cosplay. The actor of Ichigo has obviously the Ichigo hair, which is just not natural to any Japanese person. And you have characters like Abarai Denji, who is just fully dressed up in all of his like wacky clothes. And you have Kuchiki Byakuya, who is actually played by Miyavi, who I think was Honestly, probably the most perfect casting choice to play as Kuchiki Byakuya. I don't think anyone other than Miyavi could play as Kuchiki Byakuya, and he actually looked really, really fucking cool. But I guess one weird casting choice in my head was Dukia. I mean, the actress who plays Dukia looks like Dukia, has the same body proportions as Dukia, but just like kind of looked a little underdressed, especially when looking at Denji and fucking Byakuya. Also, I wanted to see some more Bankai's, goddammit. 
and we only got to see one Bankai, which was Denji Zabimaru. Which, to be fair, is a really cool Bankai, but, I mean, goddamn. I wanna see some more Bankais, goddammit. The action was pretty okay, uh, the CGI, not as bad as I've seen in other live-action anime. Overall, like, I feel Bleach was, like, the most, like, 5 out of 10 experience I've ever felt from a live-action. I'm only putting it on a B tier and not a C tier because at least it ended kind of nicely. It ended at the point when Rukia basically sacrifices herself to basically get herself captured by Byakuya and Denji to go back to the Soul Society. At least it kind of rounded off nicely. And I feel they had to do that because I believe the original intent for the Bleach live action was there was actually going to be a second Bleach live action that covers the Soul Society arc. I don't know, maybe the production ceased because the, the movie didn't do so hot. I have no freaking idea. Either way, as of right now, we only have this one Bleach live action. And to be fair, it's not too bad. I mean, if you're a hardcore fan of Bleach, you might look at this thing thing as just a piece of blasphemy, but if you just kind of like the aesthetic of Bleach and you can get over the subpar acting and the subpar CGI and the cosplay-esque look that everybody has, then you know what? It's it's actually not too bad. I can't be too harsh on it. All right, up next we have uh, the Death Note Netflix adaptation. Now, uh, I'm not going to go too far into this because I've made an entire video of it in the past, so if you'd like to look at my in-depth review of that, please go check that video, I'll link it in the description. I'm pretty much gonna put it in like a D tier, but not in the same way that I would use to describe Alita. Because the Death Note Netflix adaptation is so far from its original source material that it's almost just another movie entirely. And even when you look at it independently from the Death Note series, it's still just like, really dumb. So yeah, not much more I can say about that. Go watch my video if you want to see an in-depth analysis. And then up next we have Dragon Ball Evolution. Ah uh, yes, the, the cream of the crop, the king of the hill when it comes to bad live action adaptations. I mean, look, I've talked about this on the Trash Taste podcast. This is one of the few times that I have ever walked out of a cinema. And uh, I kind of regret doing that because uh, much later on, I went and actually gave it a go. I, I decided, hey, you know what? I walked out of this because it was so shit. I mean, I, to be fair, I don't know what I was expecting. It was so shit. You know what? I'm gonna give it a go and actually try and sit through it all. And uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's painful. It's, it's really painful, especially coming from a Dragon Ball fan. I almost don't want to include this as a Dragon Ball adaptation, but I mean, it's really the only Dragon Ball adaptation we have. Probably the only Dragon Ball adaptation we're ever going to get. At least with Death Note, there were a bunch of Japanese live action adaptations, which I haven't included in this list, but they're actually pretty decent, especially the first one. But I mean, yeah, I feel Dragon Ball Evolution is like the room of live action anime. It's just so bad that it's good, but I'm still going to throw it at an FTV because I can't lie to myself. But if you thought Dragon Ball Evolution was the worst of the worst, then, oh no, you might not have known about this next one, which is the Fist of the North Star live action adaptation. Yeah, it looks like somebody took this brilliant classic of a manga series called Fist of the North Star or Hokuto no Ken, which is, by the way, one of my favorite manga series of all time, and I definitely want to like talk about this series in more depth in another video, and decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's just get just the worst actors and a budget of about $10,000 and just make like the shittest movie imaginable. Like, I cannot explain to you how bad, but simultaneously, how fucking hilarious this movie is. Especially if you're a fan of Fist of the North Star, please go and watch this movie. I think it was made in like 1995 or something. It was like 10 years after the, the manga was made. Obviously, it had a huge impact in Japan when it first came out. And I guess that impact made its way to some Western folks. And I guess one of them happened to be a movie director. And he decided to make a live action Hollywood adaptation and just replace the entire cast with a bunch of white people, get them in some costumes, add some really just tongue-in-cheek and just tacky prosthetics and just, I guess, CGI maybe? I don't even know. That's how bad this shit is. It's so bad, I don't even know if it's prosthetics or CGI. And just make the most bastardized, watered-down version of Fist of the North Star. I think the funniest thing about this live-action adaptation is the fact that uh, even though 
Every single one of the characters in live a in Fist of the North Star, like Kenshiro and everybody, is you know pretty well versed in martial arts, right? In the case with Kenshiro, he knows Hokuto Shinken, which is an ability where he presses down on different pressure points in the body, and uh, for some reason, because of his power, those pressure points just morph the body and make them explode in epic and really cool ways. But I guess uh, they didn't have the time or the budget or both to teach the actor who plays Kenshiro in this live action movie any martial arts, so. What they basically did was they made him kind of do this on the body and just like speed it up to make it look like he's doing it really fast but it just looks like a child in like a slapping contest. And then yeah, just uh, turn around say you're already dead in the most deadpan voice imaginable and then watch the prosthetics go to work. As much as I am going to slap this in an F tier, this is an absolutely hilarious movie. Fuck Dragon Ball Evolution. Dragon Ball Evolution is nowhere close to being as bad as Fist of the North Star. Like, this truly, I feel, is the room of live action anime. And I, I almost want to, like, make a video of its own about it because it's just, it's just so bad. Alright, up next we have Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist live action. So many people think it's Furu Metal Alchemist. No, that meme is lame as fuck, alright? Call it by its actual name, which is Hagane no Renkin Jutsu, or Hagane for short. Now, the Hagane live action is, uh, it's bad. It, it's really bad. That's, that's, that's all I can say. The acting sucks. Everybody is in costume, and again, like, uh, I don't know who was responsible for, like, the costume design in this particular movie, but my god, like, fucking Edward just looks like a crackhead. I can't get over how much the wig does not match the actor's face. The story is bastardized, the, the CGI is lame as fuck. I mean, honestly, this truly was made for, like, hardcore Formula Alchemist fans who, and, and, and the hardcore fans who will literally eat up any iteration of Full Metal Alchemist. So yeah, again, I'm gonna throw this in the F tier. It's it sucks. Don't don't watch this. It it's actually really bad. Alright, up next we have Ghost in the Shell. Kokaku Kidotai, or I guess just Ghost in the Shell, since the live action Hollywood adaptation of it, which uh, I made a couple of videos on back in the day. Now listen, if there's one massive difference between a Japanese production of live action anime and a Western Hollywood production of live action anime, it's that Japanese productions, most of the time, not all the time obviously, most of the time tend to fuck up on the aesthetics, but nail the narrative. And the Western side, most of the time, tend to fuck up on the narrative but nail the aesthetics. And I feel the Ghost in the Shell Hollywood live action adaptation is definitely a great example of a movie that nailed the aesthetic, but absolutely fucked up the narrative. I mean, you look at any scene in this movie and it looks gorgeous. I mean, they put so much time and effort into really bringing the Ghost in the Shell world to life in a realistic looking way. And I mean, my god, the fucking like the geishas, like the robotic geishas that pop out, which by the way, I believe is a movie original. I don't think those were around in the original manga or anime, but they still look fucking great. They're an absolutely brilliant choice to put into it. And I mean, the fight with the invisible guy in, in on top of the water, that choreography scene, was so fucking dope in it. And again, it fit perfectly with how that played out in the original manga and anime as well. But of course, I'm giving all these praises to this movie. Let's not forget about the glaring problem that this movie had, which is, uh, as, as a lot of people pointed out when the movie first came out, is the whole whitewashing problem. Yes, I know, Scarlett Johansson is not a Japanese lady. Her, she, her acting is also not that very good, according to some people. And the only Japanese guy who was in this movie, aka Kitano Takeshi, didn't even speak English because he wasn't bothered to remember the English lines. And of course, there's the twist right at the end, which I obviously won't get into because spoilers. But uh, yeah, that completely also fucked up the narrative, especially because of the casting choice of Scarlett Johansson to play as Kusanagi Motoko. Yeah, that just, it, it caused way too many problems in the meta of the movie, or I guess the concept of this movie, much more than the actual movie itself. Like, I honest to god think that as a Ghost in the Shell live action adaptation, this one pretty much sucks. But I think if you just look at this as just a standalone sci-fi film that was 
heavily inspired from Ghost in the Shell. If you just for one second forget that this is actually based off Ghost in the Shell and just watch it as a standalone movie. I don't think it's actually too bad. Like, yeah, it's not fucking S tier material, but you know, compared to some other sci-fi shows that I've seen out there, this one is actually pretty decent, and I feel it really strongly holds itself in the visual department. So I'm probably going to give this movie a C. I mean, like, I enjoyed watching it. Like, this is a great movie to watch if you turn the sound off, like, if, if you didn't listen to the dialogue and how much they fuck up the narrative, because visually speaking, it is top-notch. It's, it's probably the most visually pleasing live action film in this entire list. But yeah, obviously the whitewashing problem, the acting problem, the narrative problem, yeah, that definitely set it a couple of points back. All right, up next we have Gintama. Now, this live action movie scared me the most when I heard its announcement. I was like, please, no. Don't do this. Don't do this to literally my favorite comedy manga series of all time. It is so fucking funny and it's so ridiculous in a lot of ways, conceptually and just the way that they frame and present some of the jokes in the series that it just, there's no way it will work in a live action format. And to my shock, they fucking nailed this movie. Like, dead ass, I'm gonna throw it up in the S tier because it actually ended up being one of my favorite live action anime adaptations that I have ever seen. Like, this is a brilliant movie. And I think the reason as to why it is so brilliant is because of how self-aware it is. I mean, Gintama as a show is already so self-aware. Like, Sodachi Hideaki loves to throw in these fourth wall breaking meta jokes about the characters being aware that they're in a manga or in an anime or that they're just manga and anime characters and I feel that they got the memo of that right when making and writing the live action version because the movie literally opens up with Gintoki and the gang talking about the fact that they're getting viewed by a bunch of people sitting in a cinema and the fact that they are in cosplay of characters. Like that takes some serious balls to say in a feature length live action anime film. But again, I think it's because of the pre-existing establishment of how just trolly Sodachi Hideaki is in the original manga and anime, that it just works so goddamn well in the live action. And I think again, because of that meta-ness of the movie, and also just the fact that the choreography and like the battle scenes and like direction is just so well done. It honestly blew my mind the first time I watched it. Like I came out of that cinema so goddamn pleased. And there's actually a second Gintama movie as well, which I didn't include in this video, but it's also equally just as good as the first. All right, up next we have, uh, I want to eat your pancreas. Kimi no suizo tabetai. Now, if you've never heard of that series, uh, you would think, what the fuck is some kind of horror shit is that? But don't worry, it is nothing like that. I want to eat your pancreas is actually a beautiful romance series and I'm not going to go into too much detail as to why it is called I Want to Eat Your Pancreas because that's honestly a spoiler but all I'm going to say is that I'm going to chuck this up in an A tier because it is such a solidly performed live action. In fact I loved this live action so much that I actually almost prefer it over the anime adaptation just because again this is a story that deals so heavily in human drama and just human interactions that seeing real people act out these very realistic and very heartfelt scenarios it's just it hits so much harder when done with real actors in my opinion and this is one of the few instances i feel where japanese acting is actually not too bad it can actually be done well if given the right direction all right but up next is uh, another doozy it's jojo's bizarre adventure part four diamond is unbreakable now this is another one that i was absolutely terrified of i i think i actually got on my knees and screamed to the heavens no when this movie first was announced and uh i watched this movie because uh, I was curious to see how the fuck they're going to adapt, especially part four, because, you know, it would make more sense to adapt, say, part one or part two, because, you know, you don't need as much CGI to show off Hamon as compared to a fucking stand. But, uh, yeah, this movie was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, honestly. In fact, I'm probably going to throw it in the D tier, uh, like a low D to a high E, I reckon, just because it wasn't as 
horrible as like you know any of the stuff in the f tier purely for the fact that the cgi in this was actually not too bad like some of the stands looked ridiculous obviously and very unrealistic but most of the stands i feel looked really freaking nice i definitely think the best looking stand in this movie was bad company i mean like when all of the fucking tanks and the army men show up and just line up like that scene looks really goddamn cool but again a big big problem with a lot of the Japanese productions is the acting and the costume design. I mean, Jojo already has such a significant look to it, especially part four, where, I don't know, like you could get some of the coolest looking actors in all of Japan, and I don't think any of them will be able to pull off a pompadour in real life, I'm sorry. Like Josuke's hair looked fucking ridiculous, Okuyasu's hair even more ridiculous, and Koichi was just like, I don't know, I already thought he was a little bitch at the beginning of part for, they somehow got an even bigger bitch to play him in the live action. Like, honestly, I think the guy who played Jotaro and the guy who played Angelo, who is actually the main character in Naked Director, who is a fantastic Japanese actor, by the way, were probably the only two good casting choices and the only good actors who actually put on a really good performance, especially Jotaro. I feel like they got the perfect guy to play as adult Jotaro in part four. But yeah, everything else was just kind of whatever. They really dragged out the final scene with Okuyasu's dad and shit like that. And it's just, I don't know. The pacing was kind of weird. I mean, the, some of the stand fights were kind of cool, but again, just the acting and just the, the ridiculous costume design just took a lot of that away. But at the end of the day, I feel it was a, almost a, a weird, fun movie to watch, especially as a Jojo fan. I I thought it was kind of cool to be honest. All right, up next is a uh, kite. Well, I'm gonna immediately throw that in an F tier because I've already done a video on that. In fact, it was uh, two videos ago that I did uh, a full depth analysis on this. But uh, TLDR, this is based off of the Henty series called Kite, made in the 90s. A brilliant uh, OVA series, by the way. And in 2014, someone was like, Finna turned that into a really boring, drab, way too edgy for my seat live action anime that just ended up completely destroying the narrative by adding too many elements into it. The acting was subpar at best. I mean, Samuel Jackson put on a great performance as he usually does. And yeah, just really bastardized and ruined a really good underground OVA series that I feel deserves way more attention. So please, Please give my video a watch if you want to know more on about that. Okay, up next is Orange. Now, um, I didn't like this film. I didn't like this film at all. In fact, I don't like any iteration of the Orange series. I read the manga, hated it. I watched the anime, hated it. And this live action, honestly, is, is not that much better. I mean, again, much like uh, you, I want to eat your pancreas, at least it's rooted in reality. So all of the characters look realistic, they act realistic, and the situations that they are put in, actually some of the performances were pretty decent. But my god, the narrative. Just how much the narrative just does not make any fucking sense is just insane to me. Like, I, I don't know why anyone would enjoy this narrative and think, yeah, that's that's realistic. So yeah, I'm gonna throw it in an E tier, the first E tier I reckon, because it's not horrible. Again, the acting was pretty good, but everything else was just trash. All right, and up next we have uh, a <laughs> Parasite. <laughs> uh. Now look, I love the original manga for Parasite, and I like the anime adaptation as well. It was pretty goddamn good. But man, immediately, like first five minutes of the Parasite live action, and I had no hope for this movie whatsoever. Like the casting was somewhat good. Everybody looked like the original characters from, especially the anime adaptation that had been released pr prior to this movie. But my God, the CGI, the CGI is so bad. Like, I don't know what they're doing in the CGI department in Japanese productions, but my god, man, hire some people from Hollywood or something, do something with the budget to just make the CGI better, or just don't touch a, an IP that requires 90% of the movie to be some kind of CGI effect that just is gonna give me a fucking brain tumor. So yeah, a uh, low E, I reckon, to a high F. Uh, just because, again, I do like Parasite a lot, and again, some of the casting and acting were pretty decent in it, but yeah, everything else was basically the same as everything else on the F tier. Alright, up next is, oh, another fucking toozy, The Promised Neverland live action. Man, coming at a, such a timely, event as well, right after uh, the god-awful ending nature of the Promised Neverland Season 2 adaptation. Now this, again, is a fantastic example of taking 
a really good concept and just making it way too anime. For one, all of the characters are in fucking cosplay and a lot of them just look like shit. I'm just gonna straight up say it, they look like shit. Although the casting choices were actually pretty good. I mean, the main the main mum, uh, like the head of the house, I, I keep forgetting her name, that actress was really goddamn good. She's terrifying in that role and that character was really laid out and presented in a really horrific way where there were some scenes that, again, were genuinely unnerving to me. And then you have the blatancy that is uh, changing a character that was originally uh, of a darker skin tone and just replacing it with fucking Watanabe Naomi, who is uh, not of a darker skin tone and just completely ruining a really memorable and uh, if you go follow along more in the story, a more of an interesting character. And again, that scene of when she asks the kids to play hide and seek with her and it, it's just some of the most what the fuck scenes in live action anime that I have ever fucking seen. Like, I get it that in the original manga and anime, she's supposed to be this really like nimble, fast moving woman, even though she she has a rather large figure, but they probably presented that idea in the most visually appalling way imaginable. Like, it, it looked like actual trash. So, yeah, again, you're going into the F tier. Man, this movie just fucking sucked. Don't watch it. In fact, don't even watch the anime. Don't watch the live action. Don't watch the anime. Just read the manga. The manga's fantastic. Please go read the manga. Give it more love. All right, up next we have Rurouni Kenshin. Now, I'm going to be just talking about the first Rurouni Kenshin movie because that's the only one I've seen. I believe there are four live actions for Rurouni Kenshin. The last one, all right, which is, I guess, supposed to be the prequel, the, the first prequel came out I think only about a couple months ago as of me recording this video and I heard amazing things about it and I fucking loved this first movie uh it is absolutely brilliant the casting is brilliant the character portrayals are brilliant the acting is actually pretty spot on and again they didn't fuck up the narrative too much they didn't add any unnecessary effects too much they didn't anime fire too much it was I feel the perfect balance of good live action acting, storytelling, but also not forgetting that anime-esque feeling that you get out of it. Honestly, I'm gonna throw this up in an S tier. I, I really enjoyed this first movie. I've actually seen it a couple of times and I definitely wanna go watch the rest of the live action Rurouni Kenshin movies as well. All right, second to last is, uh, oh my God, Tokyo Ghoul. Now I actually watched this only about two days ago. Uh, it's actually up on Japanese Netflix. And uh, I thought, I was going to fucking hate it. And uh, spoilers, I didn't exactly hate it. Yes, believe it or not, I think they almost got the Tokyo Ghoul live ad adaptation right. I think they almost got it right. I mean, especially when you uh, compare it to fucking, you know, the atrocity that was Root A. And God forbid that I'm going to watch the second Tokyo Ghoul movie that follows along that steps because that was also made. But yeah, I think again, this is very much like the Promised Neverland movie in the sense that the acting was actually pretty all right. I think the guy who plays as Kaneki in this movie, his acting skills were actually very, very good. I was, I was very surprised about that. Like the scene when Kaneki first turns into a ghoul and he's coming to terms with the fact that he can't eat normal foods anymore and that he's starving but he doesn't want to stoop down to the level of ghouls by eating humans and stuff like that portrayal of just Kaneki going mad slowly was done really really well and really convincingly and again the fantastic thing about a lot of Japanese live actions which they should do more often is don't overdress the characters man like you know obviously the ghouls they're gonna overdress and they actually looked kind of badass minus the fact that the Kaganeers kind of look like ass in live action because of course Japanese production CGI is ass most of the time but I mean, Torka looked really cool. She wasn't really overdressed all that much. Um, really, the only guy who was overdressed was was the main bad guy with the white hair. Even though he's played by uh, Oizumi Yo, who is actually an actor I really, really like. And his performance is actually pretty good because he's just a good actor. But yeah, overall, I didn't really hate this movie as much as I thought I was going to hate it. It's, it's, it's a real shocker. So I'm probably going to throw it up in the B tier. Like, it honestly wasn't all that bad. But last... And certainly not least, is your line April. She got so Kimi no Uso. Again, this is very much like I want to eat your pancreas. In fact, I am going to throw it up in an A tier. Uh, just because, again, all the same points I said about I want to eat your pancreas definitely does apply to your line April. I'm just glad of the fact that they didn't make 
the actress who's playing as Kaori wear a fucking blonde wig. Like, if, if they did that, I would have probably stooped it down to maybe a B or a C tier. I'm so glad that they just kept her original hair color and just made her really portray Kaori using just the acting and just using her personality because she really did do a great performance of Miyazono Kaori. Uh, and I mean, yeah, what can I say? I loved the anime for Your Lion April. The manga is also brilliant. As a classical pianist myself, this story just hits me so fucking hard. And the live action as well is really freaking cool because you get to see just a bunch of people just shred on violin and piano in real life. Who doesn't like that? But yeah, guys, that's gonna do it for the Anime Man's ultimate live action anime tier list. Here it is. Uh, I've just noticed, actually, literally all three of the ones I put in S tier, the main characters are all samurai. I, I guess I like samurai movies. Who would have thought? And also, all the stuff in the A tier is all romance anime. So you can basically start to see somewhat of a pattern here. But yeah, I don't know if any of these are going to come to as a shock to some of you guys. But uh, yeah, as you can see, not everything is in the F tier. In fact, there are a lot up in the S, A and B tier. And, you know, that just goes to show that if you actually give some of these movies a go and you kind of look at it and especially compare it to some of the shitty ones out there like... Dragon Ball Evolution, Attack on Titan, Full Metal Alchemist, all that kind of stuff. There are actually some pretty decent live action anime out there. I feel though that that is almost a given, you know, considering the fact that you can say the same thing about just regular movies in general in any genre. You can say that about anime and manga as well. So yeah, if there's anything you're going to take out of this, uh, you know, give maybe the shows in the S, A and B tier a go. I think those are the ones that are pretty worth it to go check out. C and below are uh, probably not worth it, so uh, don't even bother unless you want to, you know, be a, a masochist and sit through some shit movies. But of course, as I said at the beginning of this video, I haven't seen every single live action anime. So there's probably a bunch that is missing from this tier list. So I guess let me know down in the comments below, what are some of your favorite live action anime adaptations? What are some of your least favorite live action anime adaptations? And of course, I've left the link to this tier maker thing down in the description below. So uh, if you've seen all of these, then I guess uh, you can make your own tier list and send them to me over on Twitter so I can roast your garbage opinions because we all know this one is the correct one and no one else is. And I guess if you have any more suggestions for tier maker videos, because I guess this is still a thing. Uh, again, let me know either in the comments below or send them to me over on Twitter. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Like your favorite if you enjoy, subscribe for more banter, keep watching anime. Ciao!